these points there are questions for all of humanity. And there, was, there, is, there is some fear in there, and we want to deal with that. And then, Tolik, I'd like to bring up the, the points that you've made. Um, before I start, I suppose I should make it clear that my body is relatively human. But my soul is composed of one third mented, one third Draco, and one third hollow earth human. It has to be that way because I have to be in balance. Um, and the human and the mantid always um, outvote the Draco. So um, that will give you some idea of where, where I'm coming from. Okay, Doug. First of all, um, Alfred. You talked about unity consciousness, and I agree with you 100%. The only thing missing there is that it doesn't work unless there are creatures on the planet that can interact and interface with unity consciousness to actually change the timeline for the better. And I'd like to give you some examples of that, Alfred. Um, um, approaching the 21st of December 2012, the Hadron Collider, a device that you will be very well familiar with it was designed to have a detrimental effect upon the consciousness change that was scheduled for humanity. Uh, you will know from your own research that the machine was deactivated uh, a day just before it was supposed to operate. It was supposed to operate right over the Christmas period and peak on the 21st of December. That machine developed a, a fault inside one of the tubes, which took six hours to get to and a further six hours to repair. By the time that device was repaired, the peak for the 2012 had actually occurred. The device did not operate. I want to give you another example, Alfred. On the 30th, 30th of September last year, the uh, National Security Agency's new base at Bothdale, which is the device that stores all of the emails, all of the Skype calls, all of the phone calls, was the day that the ribbon cutting ceremony was going to occur and all the dignitaries were informed. They had a power outage. It shut down the whole of the organization and all the people who were on their way to cut the ribbon had to be cancelled. This is how unity consciousness, working with a, a small group of people all over the planet, send messages to government and change timelines. So it is unity consciousness, you're absolutely right, but there have to be those creatures on the planet who can link with that and um, make changes. Okay, that's the first point I wanted to make. Now I want to talk about um, JD. JD, your, your points are absolutely germane yes, to the topic yeah. here. Um, and although you raised those points, you didn't actually develop them. And I'd like to just it's take like a little time because sets after this I'm going to have to go, guys. Six rays each. Now then, when we talk about aliens, we keep forgetting, I think, that there are many different sorts of aliens. There are those that actually don't give a damn about what happens to humanity. There are those that are very, very interested and want the best outcome. And there are those that really don't want to change the status quo. And they are hive-minded. And there are many so groups of aliens who are working together rays. for a negative purpose, as there are many groups that are working for a positive purpose. The ones that are negative remain hidden because they do not want to be seen. The ones see that are positive filtered. remain hidden because they do not want to force the timeline because it's not the right time yet. Filtered and so chill. both groups are interacting with individuals. Um, you'll find that the negative... Uh, the negative aliens are interacting with the governments much more than the positive group. And the question is, can we trust them? Well, which group, we don't know yet, which group is going to actually open uh, a full dialogue. And so these are the serious questions that JD has put forward uh, from, from a, not just a human standpoint, but from any standpoint of a technologically inferior race but not a spiritually inferior race. The human race is absolutely wonderful, and if it's allowed to survive, will become one of the most beautiful creations in the multiverse. Humans create. Most aliens cannot create. They've lost it. That's absolutely right. That's why alien souls wish and do 
incarnate into human bodies so that they can experience. My own soul has been taken from my body with my permission uh, and placed in an alien body. And I have um, undertaken tasks and we've done like a holiday swap. And of course, that's pretty, pretty far out for most people, but that's the reality of the situation. I want to talk about Tolik. Tolik, there are some experiments now taking place six rays. all over the planet in small families, mm. human type families, where a high, what I call higher humans, so you call them Andromedans, I would call them Lyrans, uh, Palladians, the higher it's like eight series, sets, you can't where see it. Those I can see it when I look in. Interacting with another human based creature with a reptilian soul to see if they can live together and get on together. And there are two experiments taking place in Canada at the moment. So that might be interesting for you. Uh, I coordinate many of these experiments um, and I support these individuals as they go through trials and tribulations attempting to see if they can find balance. Um, the, the Dracos, the white reptilians, uh, certainly don't really want change. They are stuck in their ritual of ceremony, and they feel that they are the gods, and therefore we should treat them as gods. But you know what? The big ship is sinking. There it is. And some of these Dracos now are looking at the lifeboats, mm. and they're wondering now, should we jump ship Eight. Get on a lifeboat and start opening a dialogue. Um, and just Eight. before I, I close, Eight sets of I six rays. I conference run by a good friend of mine called Miles Johnson. And uh, he asked me to speak at uh, his conference in Marlborough in Great Britain. Interesting. And I was contacted by an intermediary from uh, a very powerful organization who offered me bodyguards armored cars and a deep underground base to go to if I needed it at no cost. Well, I'm not overly keen on the deep underground base, but I think it'd be rather, I think it'd be rather cool uh, one day to turn up to my town hall when there's a big meeting on and to get out of a fleet of blacked out armored cars with bodyguards. Um, uh. what, what I'm saying 